What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk through how to create a floor plan with some doors and windows inside a Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I'll make this floor plan model available at a link in the notes down below. So you can follow that in order to get a copy of it if you wanna download it and follow along. And so we're gonna start by starting a new project. So we're gonna go to File, New. And so in this case, we're gonna go with large objects, feet and feet and inches. So that means that our uh, default units will be in feet. I'm just gonna click on okay like this. So that's basically gonna create a new grid in here. And each one of these little grid pieces should be about a foot like this. But now what we need to do is we need to start by coming in here and roughing out the shape of our building. So um, for now, I'm just gonna double click on this top view right here. That's gonna maximize this. If you ever wanna go back to the four views, you can just double click on it again. But let's start by drawing a line. So I'm just gonna type in line right here. And remember, that's gonna allow us to click in order to place this object. And so if you toggle grid snap on, that's gonna to toggle, or that's gonna to snap to different grid pieces in here. If you don't have that, you can turn on your other snapping, like planar and O snap. I can link to a video about that in the notes down below. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna start by single clicking and then moving my mouse up. Then you wanna make sure that you're moving in this direction right here. In order to help us with that, we can either toggle Smart Track on. So Smart Track will give us some smart inference locks. You could also toggle on Ortho down here. Ortho is going to make it so this only snaps in these directions. Ortho is probably a little bit easier in this case, so we're just gonna do that. So first off, I'm gonna type in 31 foot, four inches, right? So you type in 31 and then the foot sign and then four and hit the enter key. That's gonna draw a line and then we need to click in that direction. So that's gonna draw a line that's 31 feet, four inches long. And then we can do the same thing right here. So we're just going to find this endpoint. And um, with your snapping turned on, make sure that you have the point object snap in here so this snaps to the end. We wanna make sure that we're snapping this directly to the end there and that there's no gap. But then we're just gonna type in 57 foot, 10.5, and hit the enter key, and then we're gonna click. So, we can use the line tool in order to quickly model out these edges. And for this last one, we could either type in this value or we could turn Smart Track on. And when we turn Smart Track on, that's gonna give us um, an inference off of this point right here. So it's gonna give us like an intersection um, inference. So then I'm gonna click, I'm gonna type in line, one more time and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna click. And so what that's done is that's given us a number of different edges in here that are gonna make up the perimeter of our object. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna take all of these perimeter edges, we wanna offset them inward. And so in order to do that, we have to do something first because if I select these objects right now and I type in a value of offset to run this tool, and we try to select this, it's not gonna let us do it, right? So it's not gonna let us do this because this isn't a closed curve. Um, Rhino considers this to be a series of unconnected edges. However, if we just take all of these and then we type in the value of join and hit the enter key, now um, notice how it says six curves joined in one closed curve. Well, now if I type in a value of offset, hit the enter key, and then I move my mouse, notice how now that offset tool is going to work with these edges selected like this. So. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our distance by clicking right here. And we're just gonna say our perimeter walls are six inches. They might not actually be in the real world, but we'll just type in a value of six inches for right now. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we check, um, we turn trim on, because notice how when we move this to the inside, we get these kind of like overlapping things on the corner. Well, if we toggle trim on, then it's gonna get rid of those. So. Notice how when I move my mouse, this is either going to this is either going to offset this inward or outward. That's really going to depend on how you've modeled this. Like for example, I modeled mine with my exterior dimensions, so I need to click on the inside in order to create this wall. All right, so now we've got our exterior perimeter wall created. There's a couple different things we could do, right? We could start by extruding this to 3D. We could also block out where our windows and everything are going to be um, before we do this in 3D. So that's kind of a personal preference thing. We'll probably explore both in future videos. But for now, let's go ahead and let's jump back into this view right here. Let's go ahead and extrude our walls to 3D. And so the way that we wanna do that is we want to take both of these edges and select them 
like this. Remember that I just double clicked in order to go back to this view, but now I wanna type in the value for extrude CRV or extrude curve. So when we do that, with both of these edges selected, notice how we can use this in order to generate a wall right here. And notice how right now, if I move my mouse and click, it's going to create this, or I can type in a value. Our extrusion distance is gonna be 10 or 11 feet. So I'm probably gonna type in a value of 10 feet in just a second. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that we've toggled the option for solid equals yes. So the reason we want this to be solid is because then it'll add a cap to the top of this wall and the bottom of the wall, so it's a solid object. That's gonna be very important when we start cutting our openings in our wall. But for now, we're just gonna type in a value of 10 feet and hit the Enter key like this. And it might help if I toggle into shaded mode right here, but you can see that what this did is this came in here and this extruded out our shape into 3D walls. And notice how it added a cap on the top and on the bottom, so now our walls are solid. All right, and so while we're in here, we can also really quick add a slab in here. And so that's pretty easy to do because we just wanna select our perimeter edge that we already have. So you can just click on this and notice how you get a little window that shows you multiple different things. That pops up anytime there's multiple things occupying the same space in Rhino. So we wanna select the option for curve. That's going to select the curve that runs around the outside here. And then we're just gonna jump into our surface tools Real quick, there's an option here for surface from planar curves. You can select, that's going to make this a solid surface. And then we can just select the surface and use the extrude curve function. Actually, we wanna use the extrude SRF, extrude surface function. And we just wanna extrude this down four inches. So we're just gonna type in a value of four. Make sure you type inches, otherwise it'll do it four feet and then hit the enter key. So now we've got a pad down here as well. So notice how we've got the different uh, surfaces, we've got the curve and now the extrusion in here as well. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna draw a rectangle that represents our door, right? And we're gonna use this to cut our opening. And so what we wanna do is we just wanna start by just typing in rectangle and hitting the enter key. And so notice how there's multiple different ways to do this. So right now this is set on a corner to corner way, which isn't gonna inference very well for you. So what you wanna do instead is you wanna use the three point rectangle. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to set a point and then start setting additional points. So if I move my mouse up and type in a value of seven feet and then click, that's gonna set my first point. And then over here, I can type in a value of three feet and click in order to set this right here. So now what we have is we have a shape that's gonna act as our, um, we, we have a shape right here that's going to act as basically a cutting object to cut our door. And usually what we do is we wanna go through and we wanna cut our openings before we start modeling doors out. But in this case, I'm just gonna click. And notice how I have the gumball active, by the way, that's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna click on this and then I wanna type in a value of nine foot, 0.25 inches. I wanna hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna move this over by that distance. All right, so now we need to cut our opening, right? So we're just gonna take this shape and we're just gonna select it because we wanna use the curve in order to cut our opening. And then we wanna go up to solid solid edit tools, wire cut. And that's why it was important that our walls were a solid. That way we could use this in order to cut an opening in them. But now it's gonna ask us to select an object to cut, which in this case is going to be this object right here. And then you're just gonna move your mouse so you're sure that this is through the wall, right? So I'm gonna click on this point right here. Notice how you should only see a selection of this little part right here. Um, if you don't, if your whole thing is selected, make sure that you click on the invert button so that you're only cutting an opening right here. But now if I hit the enter key, it's going to cut this opening. So pretty easy to use. And so now what we want to do is we want to do the same thing for our windows, right? So we're just going to type in rectangle. And in this case, we're going to select three point and we're going to set a four foot high point and click. And then we're going to type in four feet over here and click like this. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take this object and we want to align it. And so in this case, moving it with the gumball isn't necessarily the best way to do this. You actually wanna use the move function because we wanna align it with this point right here. So I'm just gonna type in move, hit the enter key, and then I'm gonna set this so that it moves upward like this and make sure that you have smart track turned on, but that's gonna allow me to move this upward so that this aligns with our top point 
right here. And then we just want to take this and we just want to move it over um, three feet. So we're going to type in a value of three feet. Actually, we should have typed in a value of negative three feet. And you can just click on these arrows right here in order to get this to show up. But then we want to use the gumball tool to create a copy. And so this time when I select this object with the gumball active, I want to hold the alt key when I click on this. What that's going to do is that's going to put that in here in copy mode. And then I want to make a copy that's negative four foot, six inches in this direction, right? So I just hit the enter key. That's going to make a copy right here. And then you can do it again. Just do an alt click, negative four foot six right here. Well, then we should be able to select all three of these like this. So we're just going to select all of these curves and then we're just going to do the same thing with our wire cut. So we're going to do a solid wire cut, click on this object, make sure that we set a point right here and hit the enter key. So now we were able to quickly create these openings right here. So I'm going to go through and create the rest of the openings and I'm just going to follow these same steps for the rest of this. So I'll be back in a second when I'm done with that. All right, so now we have all of our openings cut inside of our model. Well, now we just need to come in here and we just need to model our doors and windows, right? And so this should be somewhat easy just because we've already got the curves in here that we used in order to generate these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're going to make our door. So let's go back to our door and you should have a rectangle making up your door right here. Well, we can use this in order to extrude that through here to create the kind of door that we want. And we're going to keep this one pretty simple. So the first thing we want to do is we want to jump over under our top view right here. And what I want to do is I want to move this door. So we're going to type in move right here. And I want to move this back so that it's aligned with our midpoint right here. So when we do this, this is really easy to do in the top view, which is why these multiple viewports is helpful. But now we need to take this object and we want to extrude it to create our door. And there's a really useful function in here that actually allows us to extrude an object in two directions. So we just want to type in extrude and this kind we want to select extrude CRV. We're going to hit the enter key. So notice how right now, right, if I was to extrude this door back, um, it's not actually centered in this opening, which actually might be okay for the way that doors work. But let's say that it is going to be centered for right now. What we can do is we can select the option for both sides. So what that's going to do is that's going to extrude this in both directions, right? Notice how we're getting extrusion to the left and to the right. And in this case, we're gonna assume our door is two inches wide. I have no idea how accurate that is to real world dimensions, but we're just going to type in a value of one inch and hit the enter key. That's gonna allow us to generate our door. And for now, that's gonna work okay. Um, we might want this to look a little bit different in the future, but for what we're doing right here, we're gonna call that good. And so now let's go ahead and let's create our frame. All right, so what we want to do is for this rectangle, we want to delete part of this curve, right? So we're going to type in the value delete sub curve. And so it's going to ask for a start point to deletion, which we're going to select this right here, and then an end point, which is going to be right here. Well, notice when we did that, that removed this edge that was on that curve. And so now we want to use the offset function in order to do this. So we're going to type in offset CRV, so we're just gonna select the option for offset. That's gonna allow us to offset this outward, right? And we can offset it to whatever distance we want. So in this case, it's set to six inches. I'm gonna go ahead and set the distance to two inches just by clicking on distance and typing a value. But then we also wanna make sure that we've set our cap to flat. If we set it to none, it's not gonna make this as a, as a closed curve. So we wanna make sure that we select the option for cap, flat, and then we can click right here. And so if you look at this, what this did is this offset that curve and it's going to be a little hard to see because it's inside the wall, but it basically offset this curve outward and it also closed it in down here. So now we've got that curve in here. Well, we can just use the extrude function for extrude curve in order to extrude this. And again, make sure that you've set this to have a value of Make sure that you've set this to go to both sides, but now I'm gonna extrude this outward. So I've got maybe like an inch of clearance on either side, or maybe like a half inch on either side. So my wall is going to be six inches thick and we're extruding in one direction. So we wanna do 3.5 for our distance. So we just wanna type in a value of 3.5. Make sure you type in inches and then hit the enter key. 
So now what we've done, right, is we've generated a door frame around our opening. So now we've got a door and a frame right here. All right, so now let's do the same thing for one of our windows. So we're just gonna select this curve right here and I'm gonna go ahead and find it in my top down view. And I'm just gonna type in move, put this in the central point. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. So in this case, right, we're going to extrude this. We're gonna extrude our curve and we're gonna go ahead and say this has a, a thickness of, we'll go ahead and do two inches again. So I'm just gonna type in a value of one inch right here and it's gonna extrude it to both sides. We're gonna hit the enter key. So now we've got our glass plane in here. We just need to model out our frame and the frame's super easy because it just goes out in all our different directions, right? So we just wanna select the option for offset and in this case, we wanna offset this outward and we wanna offset it outward by a value of two inches. So um, we can just type in a value of two inches, make sure that cap flap is selected and hit the enter key. And so one thing that might be a little bit helpful for you um, before we extrude this, because this time we need to select both of these edges, is we wanna select this whole wall. I'm gonna type in hide in order to hide that. We'll unhide that in a second, but this allows us to really see what we're selecting, right? Because we need to select both the inner and outer curves before we extrude this so that we only get a frame. We don't get like the overall window. So I'm just going to select this curve. I'm gonna do a shift click and I'm gonna select this curve right here so that we've got these two selected, but then we can type in extrude curve. And we're gonna extrude this three and a half inches. So 3.5 inches and hit the enter key. And then to get that back, we can just go to edit, visibility, and then we're just gonna type on show or select show. So now we've got our window objects in here. And so the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna select these window objects and I'm just going to copy them, right? There's no reason to model them again when they're the exact same size. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select our window. We'll select the interior as well. I'm just gonna hold the Alt key and type a value of four foot, six inches and hit the enter key. Then we can do the same thing again. Alt, click, four foot six right here. So we wanna reuse as much of this as possible. Right, so now we can take this and we can mirror it along this corner by doing the same thing, right? We have these selected, we're just gonna type in a value of mirror and it's gonna ask for two points in here. You wanna make sure this is set to copy equals yes, but then I can click on this point and this point right here. And then it's just a question of taking these two objects and aligning them, which is really easy to do from the top down view using the move function, right? So we're gonna find our midpoint and we'll just align it right here. And so then we'll just hold the Alt key, click and drag this over, and then we can use the Move tool to align it. Do the same thing for these windows as well. And so now all we have to do is move our door or uh, make a copy of our door and put it over here. So I'm just gonna hold the Alt key and click and drag, making sure that I'm creating a copy. And then we're gonna get this close and then we'll use the move tool to align it. So we'll type in move, we'll, we'll align our midpoint with our midpoint right here and hit the enter key. So now we've got doors and frames all the way around here. All right, so real quick, let's talk about how we could add some materials to these objects. Um, because right now, if we jump into rendered mode, right, it looks pretty plain. Um, there's no actual materials applied to these. But what we can do is we can apply materials to these objects. So for example, let's say that I was to go into my material section, I can add a material from my material library. So if I click on the material library, it's just gonna take me into the Rhino default material library that's in here. Let's say I wanted to apply a wood to my door, so maybe they're like a oak or something like that. So we could just select an oak, maybe this oak light, and then we could just select our object, right click and click on assign to objects. And so then if we were to jump into rendered mode, you can see how this has that wood material applied to it. Now, I don't wanna to go too far down that particular rabbit hole. Um, so materials are kind of their own thing, but you could also just drag this onto that object like this. However, um, when you do have a bunch of repeating objects like these windows or our different frames or something like that, there's a different way you can do this where you don't apply this individually, right? So let's say we wanted to apply one of the glass materials. So maybe um, we'll just go into our glass. For now, we'll just go with the light blue glass. But let's say we wanted this 
to be on our windows, we could absolutely drag this onto every one of our windows, right? But then what happens if we decide that we wanna replace that with something else? There's an easier way to do this. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take these windows and then the frames and put them on layers. Because what you can do is you can apply materials by layer. So in this case, for example, let's take our window frames and we're just gonna go through and select all of our window frames like this. And there's a lot of things that this will make easier um, if we do this this way. Here we go. So now we have all of our frames. And actually it looks like I picked up the window there. But we wanna take this frame. And so now we have all of our different frames in here, right? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna jump into our layers manager right here. And we want to right click and click on new layer. And you wanna create a layer called window frames. Right, so we've got our window frames in here. Well then with these selected, we can go back through and we can drop all of these on the window frames layer just by clicking the drop down and clicking on window frames, right? So let's say we wanted to do the same thing with our glass, which is gonna be a little bit easier, I think. So let's say we've got our glass in here. Well, we can come in here and we can add a layer for glass like this, and then drop all of these on our glass layer. And so what that does is that makes selecting these really easy because we can come in here and right click and click on the select objects option. And so now with these objects selected, we can jump into the material window and click on the option for use layer material like this. Well, then we can set our layer material by clicking on this. And in this case, right, we want to set our layer material to probably some kind of like a painted metal. They might actually be aluminum, but for now, we'll just go with a paint and we'll just go with a, a black matte paint material. Then we're going to click on OK. Well, now what that's done is everything on that layer is getting that material assigned. And so if we were to do the same thing, say with our glass layer, right? So if we right click on this and select them and then jump over here, this layer is going to have a different material. So in this case, we can set our layer material to, let's go with this light blue glass like this. So now those are in here as a glass material. And if we wanted to change that material, we could just come in here and click on the layer material and just add a different material. So let's say we wanted this to be the bluer glass. We could just come in here and we could select like the turquoise glass or whatever and click on okay. Well, that's gonna replace these with the turquoise glass. So that makes swapping out those materials really easy um, when you put things on the different layers. And just a note on that glass, you get the better material if you go into ray traced mode, but that's gonna take longer for this to render because it's actually tracing the glass in here. So for your final render, you will see those different materials a little bit more. All right, and then real quick, I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna add in everything else, right? So my interior walls, just remember you do this kind of the same way, right? So you'd model out your wall layouts, then you'd extrude, then you'd add your openings and then your doors. So I'm gonna go through and do that real quick. All right, so leave a comment if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today. I will also link to this floor plan in the notes down below. So I'm also gonna link to another couple of videos on this page that can help you with this process. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.